Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. Mike here with the re-ranking of the entire Scream franchise. Matter of fact, I don't know if we've ever ranked the Scream franchise before, but this one includes up to today, January 15th, 2022. It includes Scream 5, Scream 2022, Scream Recool, or whatever you call it when you're in your underwear at night, staring into the empty abyss that is your refrigerator, wondering what to eat. There's Uncrustables in the freezer. Let's get started with it. Number five, I'm gonna go from worst to best. This one feels weird and it's not a surprise. Scream 3 comes in last place on my list, but it's very, very close. And we'll get into why it's very, very close to the number four. Uh, going back and re-watching it now, I've always hated this movie. I have, but every single time I watch it, I, I come to a new appreciation for it somehow. I realize something, and this rarely happens when you've seen a movie 20 goddamn times to just randomly be like, I fucking like this. I'm just telling you how I feel deep in my heart cockles, you know? While this movie has some of the worst stuff in the franchise, I mean, some really dumb Scooby-Doo bullshit and awful acting, and they jump the proverbial meta shark by actually having the, scre the stab cast be parts of the actual movie. I get the idea. You know, the movie was face fucked by, you know, the, the fallout from what happened with Columbine, changed the entire movie, a movie that had Stu alive and featured him running things from behind bars in the original script. This movie was fucked from the get-go by the inept cunt bucket thunder twats that are the Weinsteins. You know, it, it didn't have a chance in a lot of ways. There's a lot of bad stuff. There's some really, really awful dialogue and stuff. But let me move past that and tell you why I actually give it such a high score in my old fucking age. And that's because I realized that there's some really good character work between the OG characters in this one. Uh, Dewey has has some good spots in this one, you know? He really does. Sydney has some really good spots in it. The ending fight scene in particular, she's a complete badass. When Roman hits her in the face and she hits him right back. It's actually one of the most... It's one of the killer reveals that actually makes the most sense to me when you get to the character of Roman. Now, he's no, by no means my favorite. It's like, oh, it's the boring director with a half bowl cut. But he had one of the best motives of the franchise for me. You know, did I want to take a hairspray and lighter to Gail's fucking hair? Yeah, sure I did. There was bad stuff in it. And don't get me started on the kills. Oh my God, the kills were just pretty much non-existent. I mean, they were terrible. But there was some good mystery stuff behind it. The mystery work, the detective work going on with Gail and, and Dewey to figure out all this stuff going behind with Sidney Prescott's mom. Some of that stuff was good. The final location at the house, if they would have eased off all the trap doors and shit a little bit, that would have been okay. Lance Henriksen played a great role in the movie. There's, there's certain things to like about this and your favorite actors do some really beloved things in the film and I actually really enjoy the opening I thought the cotton weary opening while it wasn't the best in the franchise it was pretty good and they did something inventive with Ghostface with the new uh, voice changer where he could duplicate any anybody's voices uh, I, I, I like that a lot so there are things in the movie I like and I don't think that the movie overall it may not be a seven in the world of movies but just for me personally, I'll give it a seven, even, even if it is my least favorite Scream film, just because I found things to love about that movie as the years have gone on. And I can't believe I'm saying that. So on to number four, which is no surprise, it is Scream 4. Now I flip-flopped, I, I, I'm feeling Scream 3 in my mind right now a lot more than I ever have, and it's it's scary, it's a little bit scary. It's scarier than Scream 3, I can tell you that. But you know, I, I actually flip flop in my mind, do I like Scream 3 better than Scream 4 even? Scream 4 is also a seven to me. And I watched this last night after my second viewing of Scream 2022. And I have so many feelings about this movie, yet somehow not. <laughs> I, it, doesn't it feel like it's in a weird way unconnected to any of the other movies? Like it just feels like the outlier. Like sometimes I watch it and, and I feel like I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and be like, man, I had the weirdest dream that a Scream 4 existed. Cause it just, it doesn't feel real. Maybe it was that goddamn lighting effect on the entire film that just made it look blurry and weird and super bright. I mean, who gives a fuck about Ghostface when the sun is literally about to melt everyone to smithereens? I have no idea what the fuck was going on with that. The weirdest effect I've maybe ever seen in a movie. But <laughs> what are you gonna fucking do? There were things about the movie I really liked. I loved Kirby's character. I thought Hayden Panettiere was great. Uh, I liked the, the aesthetic of the whole film club. By the way, what school not only lets you have a film club after hours, but lets you paste the entire 
federal funded school walls with horror movie posters. Uh, I just I like that stuff. I thought that was cool, even if the wearing the camera thing was kind of creepy and Halloween resurrection ish. Uh, I, I got what they were going for in those scenes. I really liked the moment specifically where Ghostface was like, I didn't say I was in your closet. And then they look over and the girl gets it in the house across the street. And not only does Ghostface pop out of her closet and kill her, he entirely just guts her. And you see like her inside splayed out on the bed in the most gratuitous gore that we maybe gotten since the original film. But I just thought that go everything seemed off about this movie. Even Roger Jackson's voice seemed strange in this movie. I, I think Ghostface had some of his worst lines in this movie, even though he did have a couple good ones. I do feel like Nev Campbell was a badass in this film. I thought she was great. Uh, I liked Gale in this film. I thought Dewey was really underutilized the entire time. What did really did Dewey really do in this movie? He felt almost like an afterthought, even though he had his chance to actually be the sheriff and be in charge of things. But I did like on the flip side that we got to see Dewey and Gale actually married and together and you know sleeping in the same bed it was i don't know after seeing what happens to dewey in five by the way as soon as dewey gets out of the bed and they show him for the first time in this after watching five i was like god damn it fuck it hurts all over again the, the opening was the worst opening of the franchise for me i felt like they were so proud of themselves with the super meta uh openings to the movie that when they finally got to someone dying it was like one of the weakest kills ever like i, I just did not like that at all and my least favorite killer motive honestly i know some people like jill and i know there's been some talk that they actually thought about making scream six and seven or five and six about her being at college i don't like that idea at all we'll talk about that in another show uh, i really don't like jill as a killer i thought her motive was stupid as hell i thought her motive was like oh well you get all the attention marcia 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 i mean she literally goes sydney 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 and it was just like i don't care about this is the dumbest weakest motive to me of almost all of them and also completely non-threatening as a person she she was badass in that in that fight club scene where she's throwing herself all over the place and cutting herself. That was pretty cool. And she had some good lines and stuff in the hospital. Nothing wrong with the actress, but I just don't find her intimidating at all, especially not fucking Charlie, who I liked as a character. I always liked the film geeks or whatever, but he was just... Like, neither of them could have pulled that off. I'm sorry. I don't think those two working together could have pulled off the kills that Ghostface does in that movie. No way, no how. I just don't believe it. So some of those, those are some things I just don't like about the film. The ending of the film goes on way too long. And like, seriously, like, I know in five, there's some hospital issues, but at least they show a dead security guard. In this one, it's like, where the fuck you think there's a work shortage in your town? Like, they, they this entire hospital is completely fucking empty on the night of multiple super wild serial killer crazy fucking serial murders. So there's <laughs> some shit that just doesn't make. There's people shooting each other in the hospital and nobody's like, hey, are you okay in there? What's up? Not one single fucking person. Wes Craven finds ways to, to, to make the movie still scream and still good despite all that stuff. That's why the movie still lands at a seven for me. It's got some a little bit of vicious ghost face. Some of the lines still work in the movie. The OG cast just does a, such a great job. They just never let us down. But I think I liked Scream 4 a little less on rewatch. I like Scream 3 a little more on rewatch. It's a little fucking wild. And I actually like the boyfriend too. Uh, the one that was kind of the red herring through most of the film. He got shot in the dick, but I liked him a lot. He felt kind of like Billy-ish to me. And he was nowhere near that cool, but he had that, you know, there was something fucking there. By the way, really happy to find out that Curvy survived that whole thing, which we apparently learned in Scream 5. I didn't notice it, but that's why you guys are fucking awesome. That's why we're going to stream on Monday, so you could tell me everything I missed, and then we can all talk about it together. But happy to find out that Kirby's still alive, for sure. This is where shit gets a little bit fucking tight. My number three, and I had a battle in my mind. I mean, I had a fucking fight in my mind between what was going to be number three and what was going to be number two. This movie is an 8.5 to me. It's a full point and a half better than Scream 4 and Scream 3. As I said in my review, I think this is the, the, the sequel that feels more like the original than any of the other films. And even though it didn't push the needle as far as some of us would like because we had these crazy ideas, and, and that's fine in our head about like Stu coming back or like what could happen and, and like, oh my God, they're going to change everything. And they just made another Scream movie. But they made one of the most competent Scream movies there there are. Now, I did not like that Amber was one of the killers. I hated that she killed Dewey. I hated that Dewey fucking died. It's a choice I would not have ever made. I absolutely hated it. It's like a twisting knife in my stomach every time I think about the fact that Dewey's fucking dead. Uh, I hate that they made that decision, okay? Can't stand it! And I don't think it had to happen. And I think it could have been someone else. Dewey's been stabbed and maimed by fucking Ghostface so many goddamn times. Wouldn't it have been nice if the killer 
if he got the final shot on the killer, I honestly would have flipped Gale and him around. I know everybody loves Gale or whatever, but kill fucking Gale in that scene. Have Dewey get his revenge on Ghostface. That's the way that should have gone. God damn it. That probably would have put this at number two if that happened instead. I'm not going to lie to you. But that being said, they nailed Ghostface. They made him scary. They put him in frame beautifully. Uh, they did an amazing job with him, and he's the most important part of the movie. You know, uh, I thought they did they did respect to the original cast, despite how I feel about the Dewey thing. I feel like that new cast that they brought in, that could have so easily sucked balls. And instead, it was actually good. Like, they were likable characters. And the thing that Scream does the best, for as much as it's talk about originals and all this shit like that, is it sets up the future in a way that no other sequel for Scream has. At the end of this movie, when you think about the sisters and the Billy Loomis connection and the fact that somebody was related to Stu, they could still do something with that. I know some people don't like it, but just fucking take it, okay? We're fucking doing it someday. It didn't happen this time, but we're coming for you. You fuck, Stu's alive. <laughs> I swear to God. They set up so many places it could go, and that's a beautiful thing. So I think that may be the best thing, and that's something I maybe didn't mention in my, in my review. They set this... this franchise up for success would have been fucking more successful with goddamn dewey in it but you know what Fuck. but you know this movie did something the other sequels weren't able to do now i'm not that's not a knock on craven that is that is uh that's a compliment to Wes craven and the reason i say that is because how can like Wes craven would have never been able to just worship his own work like this you know what i mean like that would have made him kind of a conceited douche uh, Radio Silence was able to worship the original Scream. It was it was able to honor it. It was able to owe to it and, and try to really create some of those little special things that happen in Scream in this movie. And again, even though they didn't push the needle, they, they paid a nice tribute to Wes Craven. And again, that's something that he... that If I was in his shoes, I wouldn't have been able to do. I would have kept trying to make new movies and, and change it and do that. And, and that could have been great too. But uh, for those that wanted a movie that felt like the original Scream... I think it had to be somebody else because, again, it would have been weird for Wes Craven to just go and just, like, worship his own piece of work like that. And just one more time, I just want to take Killing Dewey and fire it into a thousand fucking suns. I hate it so much, I want to fucking kill it with fire. I want to step on it, I want to squish it, I want to punch it in its goddamn mouth. So if you, they handed me that script on the page where Dewey dies, I wipe my ass with it, okay? I just want to say that. But I did really enjoy Scream 2022. It's one of the best sequels. I give it an 8.5. You know what else I give an 8.5 to? You know, this movie, I have a thousand tiny little problems with it. I really do. I watch it, and I pick it apart probably more than any of the other movies. I'm like, how the hell did Ghostface know where his ear was exactly on that wall when he killed him, you know? <laughs> tiny little things like that. The five data alphas or whatever the fucking, the college campus stuff. Some of it, just little parts of it, felt like one of the bad Scream ripoffs. Uh, I... Tiny, 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 tiny little fucking things. Uh, there's so much to just absolutely love and adore about it. I can't fucking help but have it as my number two movie because, A, the killers. I'm not, a, there's something about the, the Billy's mom angle. Like, it makes a lot of sense, but there's something about it I just don't like. Uh, but that being said, Timothy Oliphant, as, as, as Mickey, as one of the killers, I thought he's one of my favorite killers. He's high on my fucking list because a, I like the character a lot. I always like the film student people for some reason, but that was Timothy Oliphant, man. And he was given a, 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 an out there performance. He was chewing on the scenery, doing some wild shit. And I don't think we knew who he was going to be at that time. Uh, but looking back on it now, it's like, man, we're lucky as fuck that we got Timothy Oliphant in that role doing that. And I thought he fucking crushed it. I thought he was amazing in his whole, uh, his whole thing at the end. Now, the actress who played Billy's mom in that, she was fantastic too, I thought. Like, she was wild and crazy fucking kids. And I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the killer reveal. Uh, even at the time, it felt disappointing because nothing was going to be Billy and Stu. You know, nothing was going to match that, but I thought they did a pretty good goddamn job with it, for sure. It had one of the franchise's best opening kills, even if, again, I hate that Ghostface somehow knew exactly where his ear was going to be on that fucking wall. Uh, it's, despite my little picks about the opening, it's one of the best openings of the franchise. I love the fact that Jada Pinkett Smith is probably my least favorite character in the entire franchise. My God, was she fucking annoying. Uh, she's just a shitty person. I mean, who orders popcorn with no fucking butter on it? But it was nice to see her get it almost immediately, <laughs> as soon as the movie started. I, mean, I fucking love Cotton Weary's role in it. I thought he was cool. I like that whole thing that they were doing with Gail and him. Uh, I thought Nev Campbell was super badass in this. She's been great in every movie. I mean, honestly, has Nev Campbell been bad in a single one of these movies? Her or Dewey? 
I mean, he had some moments in Scream 3, but fuck me, man. Fuck me, wow. <laughs> and you know you know how I said that Scream 2022 feels the most like the original movie than any of the sequels? Uh, I think Scream 2 takes a second place to that, but it's kind of the best of both worlds because not only does it have the closest ties story-wise to Scream 1, the most natural follow-up, but also it has a little bit more of its own identity than Scream 2022 does, as much as I enjoyed Scream 2022. And I think that may have been the straw that broke the camel's back getting this one into number 22. And, you know, not just that, but it's got one of the best soundtracks. It could be, it may be, I think it is, I should just come out already out of the fucking Scream soundtrack closet and say that. I think Scream 2 is my favorite Scream soundtrack, man. I fucking love this album so much. The music cues were so fucking perfect. I adore this goddamn movie. Even if I nitpick the shit out of it every time I watch it, Scream, Not Scream 2 is, I think, the second best Scream movie of the franchise, but barely. And I'd be remiss if I did not mention Dewey's excellent fucking speech uh, to Gale in this movie. Some of my favorite lines from the entire franchise come from this movie. The, uh, the Jerry O'Connell, I think I love you scene was awesome. Uh, there's just some really beautiful moments in this movie that I love and adore with all my dark little fucking heart. That leads us to number one, finally. Who else did you think it was gonna be, Sydney? The sequels are great, but they're no Sharon Stone. Scream is undoubtedly the best movie of the franchise. The original Scream, 1996, changed horror for fucking ever. It didn't just change horror, but it saved fucking horror. Who knows what the fuck kind of state horror would be in to this day if it weren't for Wes Craven and Scream. And you gotta give it up for Wes Craven, man, because the guy, if you look at his career, it is insanely inspiring. Who else has multiple pillars of horror come from one space the way that Wes Craven and horror does? Did that make any fucking sense? No. But look at this. Nightmare on Elm Street, man. The hills that have eyes. The hills have eyes. Not the hills that have eyes. The, hill, the hills that will have eyes at some point in the future. Part two, the babysitter's dead. The hills have eyes. Uh, the last house on the left. Wes Craven has so many important cornerstones of horror under his goddamn freddy krueger hat it's insane man but no scream it's easy some people think scream 2 is better than scream and i think you're a fucking looney tune like don't get me wrong i respect your opinions and i by god i love them love you for it that's what movies are about is we have different opinions but you're wrong you're so goddamn wrong in my heart and soul and mind you can fuck off with that shit but i appreciate you and i respect it but fuck you no don't i didn't mean that i meant you know what I mean. Look, I can have macaroni with you, but we can't make out. Scream is a 10. It is a perfect film in my heart. I, I'm sorry. It's one of my top 10 favorite films of all time. Could be top five once I go back and look at it. Uh, I just, it's, it's got the best opening. It's got the best killers. It's got the best cast. It's got the best moments. It's got, fuck, it's the best everything, man. I mean, again, it's a 10. The two closest to it are 8.5s. And I probably give all of these movies higher scores than maybe many people would just because I love the franchise so much. But Scream's a fucking 10, no matter how you dice it up, sweetheart. It's a fucking 10. And guys, please, um, if you don't feel that way, it's I don't care. Like, that's cool. Like, I don't I don't judge. I, I'm, I'm joking about all this, but uh, not, not with how much I love it. And I had Stu fucking Mocker, man. Stu fucking Mocker, dude. I could go on and on and on about how much I love Scream and how it saved horror and all that, but that would be kind of redundant. Like, if I went in my basement and stabbed the dead hooker again, she's already dead. There's no reason for me to stab her again. The way that it jumped from absolutely brutal, mean fucking, just horrifyingly mean kills. Like, think about Casey Becker running, running away from her house and like, her parents are in view, she can see them, if only she could scream and get it out, but she's been stabbed, so she fucking can't. That is so mean and fucked up that she's getting gutted while her parents are feet away from her and she can't get to our door. And then he hangs her from the tree and her parents have to see it. Holy shit. The greatest opening film scene of all time. I have no qualms with fucking sticking you. I mean, I have no qualms with saying that. It is the greatest opening sequence in a film of all time, in my opinion. Uh, God damn, do I love that fucking movie. But there, there's a reason why it's number one, and it's number one with a fucking bullet, man. Um, that's it, man. That's the ranking. Scream 5, Scream 4, Scream 2022, Scream 2, Scream 1. And so, some of those are close, man. I could flip-flop 3 and 4. I could also flip-flop 2 in the 2022. Comment down below, guys. What are your all's rankings since you've seen Scream 5? Where do you put it in the franchise? More videos to come. Live stream Monday night. Spoiler stream. 
where we can all talk about all the spoilers of Scream 5 together. And it's going to be a goddamn blasty blast. So I hope you guys are there. Share it and give your rating. Start a conversation with your friends. You know, help us out, help you out. Help me help you. Let's kiss. No, but I really appreciate you guys watching all this stuff. We got more coming. We're going to rank the killers. We're going to rank the kills. We're going to do all that good shit. I love your fucking faces. And, uh, you know, I'll be right back.